guys kev here and i want to do a video on this guy this is a new knives knife um i don't actually know the name of it maybe we'll find out and you're probably wondering why is that sharpie marker on there did you cut yourself no um we'll talk about it in a second because it was a uh topic of discussion on the live stream um i also want to test something else out that i saw from one of my buddies and uh we'll get into it but yeah this is a cool knife and this is on kickstarter so if you're interested in checking this out i suggest you get over to kickstarter there's probably like 30 days left when this video posts and we'll talk about materials and everything i'll pull it up on kickstarter and we will discuss they sent me this knife so i want to be clear this was sent to me for review i believe they sent a bunch of these out so you'll probably see a lot of videos um and i'll be honest my first impression was eh, it's brass i hate brass but the more i've had this around and the more i've just kind of fidgeted with it and used it i really like it now there's one downside to it i did not carry this and the reason i did not carry this is because it is brass i told them when i got it that i unfortunately hate brass it's not just that I hate it, it's that it somehow like interacts with my sweaty ass hands and it, my hands get just nasty, smelly, and it's gross. And it just, I just hate it. Plus it's heavy. Um, it's just a terrible material, in my opinion, to use for knife scales. Um, it's cool for washers and stuff like that, but I really don't want it on my knives. And unfortunately, they just happened to send me the brass one. So I do want to check out a G10 one at some point or a titanium one or even that Zerkutai one that costs a arm and an actual leg. Um, but we will discuss all these things. Um, the short and simple of it is if you wanted to just get in and out on this video in two minutes, this is by far the best folding utility knife I have tried. I haven't tried them all. But I've tried most of them, and this blows them all out of the water. And there's a few reasons for it. It has a finger choil situation, and you get an absolute shit ton of blade to use. And it's stable, right? It's not super uh, flexible and stuff like that. A lot of times, if you get this much blade, you're getting a lot of flex, right? I'll show you uh, a utility knife that I have that I use occasionally. My James brand Palmer is down in the junk drawer in our house. That is what my wife uses to open boxes. It's easy for her to operate and swap blades and stuff. That is one thing to consider on this. It's not that fast. It's easy. It's just not that fast. Um, but we'll get into all of it. First, I wanted to pitch another Kickstarter to you guys. One of my good buddies in this EDC game of ours is Jacob over at Kvist Blade Works, a.k.a. Jacob Lundquist Design, etc. Really cool dude. He has a new product coming out. I believe this product is USA made. He's making this himself. He has a CNC machine and it is something just fun and it's not a knife. It's a multi-tool beard comb so let's watch this video and um, i just wanted to show you this at a time where beards ran long and untidy where lager could not be sealed nor opened where the hex has not yet been incepted the gods looked down and took pity on these poor mortals then the day came one that shall never be forgotten Raikta was gifted to them with joy and thanks. Raikta thanked the gods. Hey, Kickstarter, I'm Jacob Lundquist, <laughs> and this is Rikta. My take on the comb small prices. Rikta makes a great comb for one's beard, mustache, or hair. It also offers more utility in an innovative design. Being made from grade 5 titanium, it can easily open a can, pry, be used as a flathead screwdriver, both 1.5mm and quarter inch hex driver pockets, 
And lastly, a great to use bottle opener. It is laser cut from sheets of grade five titanium and then shipped to myself for finishing. That involves deburring, grinding, blasting, washing, and anodizing if you want. It will be available in these five colors. Richter is completely USA made and hand finished. Kickstarter is a great community, one that I love to be a part of and support. So if you want a cool comb multi tool that packs a punch in such a small package, please join the campaign. Let's bring this thing to market. Thanks so much. Have a good day. So I just wanted to show you that um, I love Jacob personally. He's a friend and anything I can do to help support him, I will. Um, this is up on Kickstarter right now. 21 days to go. So probably 15 by the time you see this. As you can see, I am a backer. I picked one of these up. You can get these for $39 on Kickstarter right now. You can also order a Northwoods Leatherworks custom slip for your Rykta, which is really cool. You'll see that when you check out. Um, and there might be some other stuff along the way. He does have a stretch goal that includes a mini version of it that he wants to do that would work on like a keychain. So support Jacob, go over to Kickstarter and pick up a Rykta for $39, USA made, grade five titanium, beard comb and multi-tool. I think it's cool because I actually have a beard most of the time and it'd be kind of nice to have the comb and then it could work for other stuff as well. And like I said, I love the guy, so I want to support him. So that is the Rykta. Now let's talk about the knife from New Knives. We'll go over their Kickstarter campaign real quick. Um, I don't know if you guys want to see their video. We could play it real quick, and then I'll get into the knife a little more. If it gets too detailed, we'll skip off. Or if it gets too fancy. Hopefully it was loud enough the first time. All right, I see you guys get the point, obviously. Now you can see here it has been funded and there are 43 days to go. Again, probably be like 35 by the time this video comes around. Now I have one of these here, so I'm not gonna back this project personally, but that's because I have one sitting here right now. Um, you can obviously pledge without reward. You can always do that on Kickstarter if you're just trying to support somebody and maybe you just have five bucks. Um, you can get the G10 version for $39. This was a super early bird. They're gone. $39 right now for G10. That's pretty damn good in my opinion. Um, you'll be able to choose your color and everything once, um, once it goes through. Now, these all come in a really cool pouch. So this is actually a USA made pouch. Now the product is not USA made. I confirmed that because their email or something to me said USA made. And I was like, it's not possible for $40. And they were like, yeah, no, it's made in China. I don't know where, you know, if there was a mix up somewhere. But um, anyway, this pouch is USA made and it's really nice, guys. I would have to say that this pouch could be useful for other things if you want it. Now, a lot of people are weird, and if they buy something, they always keep the exact packaging somewhere and never use it. But for a $40 knife, you could take this pouch and use it for anything, uh, coin purse kind of thing, uh, put some EDC gear in here. I could see this being useful for me, put my medication in here, put my um, eye drops in here, some other stuff, chapstick, and it would be great for that kind of stuff, cash. 
So it's really cool that for $40, this comes along with it, right? Um, they have, you know, two G10 ones for 68. It goes on brass or copper 79 and titanium $89. That's not bad. You're getting titanium scales. Um, and then the one thing I want to show you is this Zerk. Zerku tie version, which they call zirconium tie, it is seven hundred dollars. Seven hundred dollars. That is insane to me, but you know it is what it is. They probably just threw it in there, see if anybody would buy it. So let's talk about the knife, right? I have seen pictures and reels on their Instagram of a bladed version of this. Um, and I was trying to see if I could check that out because it does look pretty cool. I think it's like a drop point design. Uh, it's a very simplistic, you know, overall design here. Now, I know that if we look at it like this, a lot of you are going to say that looks familiar. And that's because it really looks like a uh, Civivi Elementum handle. Um not going to lie, first thing I thought when I saw this was, oh, they made an Elementum utility knife. Um, and then I realized it was another company. Now, it's a very generic sort of handle. So I'm not sitting here saying they copied it. I'm just saying that's what my brain did at first glance. So I'm sure many of you will have the same thought. Um, the clip is uh, functional. I did test it. It's pretty tight. Um, but it does work. Like I said, I didn't carry this because of the smelly thing with brass. Um, but I did play with it a lot, and I've used it quite a bit in the office here. Um, it has thumb studs. I do wish they were a little bit... I uh, wish they had some kind of milling or something on them because I tend to slip off sometimes. The detent is good. It's not too strong. Um, and it's not too weak. It's perfect. But I wish I had a little bit of grip here because I tend to slip off sometimes if I don't really dig in, right? And then with the front flipper, they didn't jimp it up and around. They stopped jimping it right here. And that can be a um, recipe for disaster for somebody to hurt themselves. Um, but if you get used to it, it seems to work pretty fine for me. And um, it's not an issue. I think... The fact that it has this cool utility blade on it um, kind of nullifies those issues for me. But I could see some people complaining about that. It is on ball bearing, ceramic, I believe. Um, and then you have this utility blade, which is unique in my opinion because of how much blade length you get. So your traditional sort of box cuttery pocket EDC thing. This is a Giltec rut. Ruck, I always mix that up. Ruck, um, it has two settings, so I can pop it to right here or I can pop it to right here. Okay, it's kind of locked in there. It's a left handed version, by the way. Um, but you'll see how much blade that I have to use, right? Not much. I have about four times, three times the amount of blade length on the um, new knives. Now, I don't know. Did they give us a name for this thing? I should have looked. Does it have a name? Or is it just the new knives utility knife? Oh, there you go. Kumpanter. Kumpanter? Is it German? Kumpanter? Kumpanter? I don't know. Uh, I'm just going to call it the utility knife. <laughs> um, but you can see there's just like not a lot of blade length here. And I get it. This is a little pocket guy. It's for opening Amazon packages and stuff, right? People rave about this product. I think it's cool, but I don't know. It's not like the best thing in the world. Um, I really like the Rexford one. Of course, that one's like $300 or something. Uh, the James brand Palmer is great. But again, I realized after using that for a while, because I really liked that model and I raved about it for a while, but I took it out to cut cardboard down, and I realized really fast that getting those corners on a box of cardboard, box of cardboard, a cardboard box is really a struggle with this much blade. You just have to put it on this high angle and then like push down with your weight so that you get it all to slice. And if you miss it all, you get all bound up and it's just annoying. So having this much blade is really a game changer. Now, of course, you have this much blade and then this area thickens up. So I don't know if that would affect your cut. Probably would. 
Um, now, one thing I noticed uh, on Stasa's channel was Stasa23, go check him out. He removed this, and I found that I'm constantly tightening this thing. Um, it wants to loosen up really easy. So this is just a screw that helps hold down this piece right here. And the way you remove the blades, it's locked in right now. The way you remove the blades is you take a T6, and you take out this screw right here, takes out this plate, and your blade pops out. And guess what? Bob's your uncle. Let's see. Do I have a black blade? It'd be kind of cool to put a black blade in here. I usually have a stack of blades somewhere. I always got to remember how to do this because I always feel like I'm going to cut myself. Oh, okay. Had it upside down. There we go. I do have black blades. Let's check these out. Got to make a uh, aesthetic stylist point when you're messing around with your utility knife, right? So you drop that in. Then you drop your T6 in there. And you get your driver. And you tighten it down. And it's that simple right get it in there and then you take this guy and you screw that in there and that locks it in now what stasa did was he took a screw that he had and it fit in there and he was able to tighten that i'm wondering if maybe these lynch screws would work these little lynch northwest screws might just work. Where's my driver? And it should be a T6 to make it easy on us. Ah, too big. Obviously, I have a ton of hardware, but was hoping. I was hoping that I'd have something just simple here that I could grab. Hmm. These are going to be too big, I think. We can try. These are um, these are from the Stout, I believe. Let's just try this short guy right here. Oh, no, that's going to go in, I think. Downside, I have to switch over to a T8 here, but I don't plan on swapping this a lot. There we go. Will it close? Yep. All right, cool. So I just took a screw from my stout. So basically, you guys will have something. If you have any hardware laying around, you should have something. It's a standard body screw. I mean, that screw will fit in. I don't know, 80% of the knives I have. So you guys should be able to do the same thing pretty easily. Um, this was the blade that came with it. And the thing I wanted to show you that I marked off here, let me just make sure this is tight. And you don't have to do this. You can um, just leave on that screw. But that screw is really annoying i think because it comes loose so easily um you could probably loctite it just put some loctite on it uh, let that cure before you put it on and then every time you use it it should stay pretty um, tight that would be a way to do it or maybe there's a way to like put something on this side to kind of lock it in but um anyway let me put this away too So, what I was showing with that line is a lot of people say with a utility knife, the cool thing is you can flip the blade over, right? So, you use the knife. Where's that? You use the knife, right? You cut open a bunch of boxes. You do whatever. And then, because um, it's a utility blade... 
See if I can get it out of here. Ugh. I don't know why it doesn't want to come out. Okay, well anyway, point is you can flip it over. So now I can use this end of the blade, right? And um, that concept does work here, except when you flip it over, this much of the blade has not been used, right? If you're using the blade all the way, right? I would venture to guess for the most part, you're using this much up here. Um, and this part is probably not getting used. So when you flip it over, you'll pretty much have a fresh blade. But I just want to point that out, that that is how much is in the handle there. So when you flip it over, you do get a new point tip and all that shit. But um, it's not like across the board. Just want to point that out. Uh, but yeah, I really like it. The action's good on it. Flicks out nice. Closes nice. It cuts nice, and I love this choil. This is something that uh, at Devo, we wanted to do a utility knife. I still want to do it. Um, I was thinking of doing a slip joint utility knife. I thought that had not been done, but then I saw, I think Serge Panchenko has one. Um, but we still might do it, and um, that would obviously have a finger choil from us, which would be, I think, unique or I thought would be unique because this is super comfortable to hold and you can get up close on the blade. And what's nice is this portion right here is thicker, the spine. So you can actually put your thumb here and not feel like you're digging in right up here. It feels really sharp. So this feels really comfortable. I think this is a great option for people who don't want to sharpen their knives. People who want all the fidget and all of that stuff that we get in the knife world but they just hate sharpening they don't even want to deal with sending knives out like that kind of stuff right or they really just need a, a precision cutting machine right then i think this makes a whole heck of a lot of sense um they should totally make like a beard comb blade or something that you can add in there that would be pretty cool um but overall this is really good for the price point i mean 40 bucks I think that's a banger. Um, yeah, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Um, it was pretty divisive in the uh, live stream I did. Some people just didn't like it. Um, and then a lot of people were on my side and thought it was cool. So I'd be curious to hear your thoughts down below in the comments. Shout out to New Knives. Thanks to them for sending this my way to review, even though it's the smelly version. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, check out the Kickstarter. Definitely go check out the Reichta from uh, Kvist Blade Works, a.k.a. Jacob Lundquist Design. And I love you guys. I hope you have an absolutely fantastic day. And I will catch you later.